Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Macaulay's New Parents Night. My name is Stephanie Strathy, and I'm the Director of Individual Giving and Parent Liaison here at the college. Thank you so much for attending. One of these days, we hope to actually meet you in person. Over 175 new parent families have signed up for tonight's event, and we are delighted to have you here. So welcome, all of you, to the Macaulay family. We have a special opportunity for you this evening. To give you a broad understanding of our Honors College community, we have put together a diverse panel of speakers who will offer you their perspectives on what the Macaulay experience is all about. And later on during the Q&A, you can ask whatever questions you have about your scholar's educational journey over the next four years. But before I introduce our speakers for the evening, we thought you'd enjoy watching a brief video as a way of introducing you to Macaulay. This is a montage of the first day of orientation way back in August. You'll see that it was an in-person experience, something all of us were thrilled to finally take part in, especially our new students. Let's take a look. A wonderful start to what we hope will be a great year for the newest members of our student body. As you can see, community is core to Macaulay's educational program, and we encourage our first year students to build strong relationships with each other, their advisors, their professors, and the rest of the Macaulay team. These relationships will inspire them to do their best and to be their best over the next four years and beyond. Before we get to our panel of speakers, I would like to introduce you to Macaulay's new interim dean, Dr. Vanessa K. Valdez, who will give greetings. Dr. Valdez comes to us from City College, where she has been a distinguished professor, scholar, author, mentor, and director of its Black Studies program. Dr. Valdez assumed the deanship in early August, and we are happy to welcome her here tonight. Dr. Valdez. Thank you, Stephanie. On behalf of the entirety of Macaulay, I'm so, so, so very happy and I'd like to welcome all of you. I'm so excited to, to speak with you all whenever you have the chance. Um, as Stephanie said, I have been a professor at City prior to this and I served at the Macaulay at City Admissions Committee for three years. And yet it wasn't until I sat in this role that I really got a chance to understand the diversity of experiences that really characterizes the Macaulay one. With eight campuses, you know, each campus has a different experience. And so Macaulay at Hunter students, and yet yeah, Macaulay at Hunter and Macaulay at CSI and Macaulay at Baruch, right? Those all, what unites all of them is the Macaulayness, and yet they still get a chance to have a unique 
experience at Hunter, at Baruch, at CSI. And so it is my absolute greatest pleasure and really the height of my career to this point to serve on this um, in this position. I look forward to learning more from you. I will be sticking around through this through this presentation. Um, and you know, can I hope to answer any questions that you may have. Welcome to this evening. Have a beautiful one. I look forward to speaking with you soon. Thank you, Dr. Valdez. And now I'd like to introduce our order of speakers. Dr. Joseph Ugaretz, Chief Academic Officer and Senior Associate Dean of Macaulay Honors College. Michael Groman, Vice Chair and Secretary of Macaulay's Foundation Board. Julia Dolega, a Macaulay student at Baruch College, Class of 2023. Sean Abraham, who graduated in June from the College of Staten Island. Joan Rose Palacios, whose daughter Olivia graduated from Hunter in 2020, and Jeffrey Glick, Macaulay's Vice President of External Relations. Thank you all for participating tonight. Dr. Ugaritz, can you start us off? So I wanna just give you a few words as a sort of an introduction about Macaulay's academic program, because of course that's the core of any college education. Uh, and, and that's my area at Macaulay, and that's what uh, I'm really proud to be a part of. Macaulay has been rated uh, one of the top honors colleges in the country, and a, a lot of that is because of our academic program. That program kind of separates into two main pieces. Uh, one of them occurs in the first two years of students' uh, time at Macaulay, the first four semesters, and that's our core seminars. These are unique courses designed especially for Macaulay students. They're not available to anyone else at any university anywhere. And they cover the arts in New York City, the people of New York, science forward, and planning the future of New York. All of your students will be taking all four of those classes in that sequence. And the reason that happens is because we feel like there's a need for a core academic uh, foundation a grounding in the skills that are essential for students to thrive and survive and accomplish excellence in their college career and far beyond. Uh, those skills include things like looking closely, describing accurately and carefully, thinking deeply, working together with others, and working together to actually have power and impact in the world around them. In other words, to change the world. So those courses all have built into them experiential moments where students come together for common events and where they get out into the city and into the field. Now, as you all know, it's been a, a difficult time uh, in the past uh, year and a half or so for any of us to get out anywhere, but we've been able to accomplish some innovations, I guess I'd say, in, in virtual artist visits for the art seminar, in independent science field activities for the science seminar, and in really kind of trying to figure out people's online presence and online interactions in the, in the People of New York seminar. You know, so I, I mentioned that's the, the, four, first, the four first semesters, the first two years. After that, most of our students spend most of their time working on courses in their major. But we don't want to stop the Macaulay connection there. At that point, in those upper, upper two years of the college career, we offer a suite of interdisciplinary, unusual Macaulay upper level seminars. These are offered to all students across campuses so that they can meet and interact with students from other uh, campuses, other colleges. And they are a stellar set of experiences that include academic material and real life interaction that no other student in, in CUNY or elsewhere is really able to get. Uh, I'm almost out of time, uh, but just a couple of quick examples of that. We've recently been able to offer a course in medical ethics, uh, examining some of the deep problems and issues that health professionals face every day. But it's not just a classroom course. That class has a half, 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 half component. And the other half, the non-classroom half, is with an emergency room doctor in the hospital uh, so that students actually get to see real life, uh, the, the principles and ideas that they're studying in their ethics course. Uh, additionally, we have courses on, on uh, Latina women writers. We have courses on vampires and zombies. We have courses on science communication so that it's not just about 
understanding the deep scientific research that students do, but how to communicate that to a wider audience and how to make all citizens uh, informed and able and intelligent uh, consumers of scientific information and sometimes producers thereof. I could go on, there's a lots, of, lots of examples, but the main idea, the theme that ties all this together is that we're looking for a kind of academic excellence for all our students and a connection to the real world so that our students are equally equipped to, uh, to, to be uh, experts in their own disciplines, but also to be able to, to talk and interact with and deal with and work with people in all kinds of fields and with all kinds of levels of experience. So that's sort of some of the underlying philosophy uh, in the classes that you, your, your students are now taking. They may not be seeing that underlying philosophy quite yet. Sometimes it's only in retrospect and maybe uh, some of some of our uh, panelists will speak to that. Um, of course, you may have specific questions or things you wanna know about. Please do put those in the, in the Q&A window and we'll be sure to get to all your questions before the evening's done. Uh, so I'm gonna hand it off to my, my friend and colleague, uh, Michael Groman, the Vice Chair and Secretary of the Macaulay Honors Foundation Board. Uh, thank you very much, Joe, and I am so proud and happy to be here. Um, I'm, a, I'm a lawyer. I've been involved with Macaulay since 2008, and I've been given three minutes to give you a little bit of my background. I'll try to be succinct. Um, I started with Macaulay in 2008 by uh, sponsoring a diversity program at my firm for some of the Macaulay students over the summer. Uh, it didn't take very long for me to realize that um, a program that I was intending to enrich the students' uh, lives and opportunities uh, quickly turned the other way. And I learned very quickly how much the Macaulay students have contributed over even that summer and to this day in my own firm. I um, started with a diversity program. I have the... Uh, the um, pleasure and honor of running the Career Development Advisory Council, which is very much involves uh, the parents, which we'll get to in a moment. I've been on the board for about five years and a vice chair. And in my spare time, Joe has also allowed me to come and teach photography uh, to the students during some of these programs. Um, my experience is while mostly in the, in the legal uh, field with the students does um, spread to all of the different disciplines. I will um, mention that when I first started with uh, our prior dean going to the directors of admissions of law schools, they didn't know what Macaulay was. They didn't know uh, anything about the students and they, that's quickly changed. And you now have students that turn down NYU to go to Columbia and Harvard. And it's really a process that's sort of taken off on its own. Um, we have in my firm in, in New York, uh, and uh, six associates who are graduates of Macaulay and went through the summer associate um, the program while they were in college, uh, one of whom was um, a graduate of Harvard, a diverse woman. And uh, when she joined us, I told her that she could have every opportunity that she wanted, but she wanted to come. She wanted to do the work with me and the kind of dedication and humility and pride just really rubs off on, on, on everyone else in our organization. Uh, as part of my responsibilities in the Career Development Advisory Council, we work uh, very closely with, with parents and the Parents Council because I guess I think you could understand that as still a very young institution, we are waiting for the students to um, rise into the kinds of areas of leadership when they could sort of pay it back and hire their own. They were almost there. I did have an experience a couple of years ago where the chairman of my firm went to pitch work from a major financial institution and was meeting with their assistant general counsel. And they said, well, Dwayne Morris and the assistant general counsel said, oh, I know Dwayne Morris. I know Michael Groman. We serve on the Macaulay board together. And, and he himself was a Macaulay uh, graduate. Um, so I hope that uh, either later, later um, during the Q&A and certainly afterwards, I would very much welcome uh, meeting and working with as many of you as possible. And I would like to close by saying that the parents, I think, serve an incredibly important function to the Macaulay uh, world in this, uh, in this point, because you have so many different opportunities and connections and leadership potential that you could help 
the students and I uh, and my colleagues would certainly uh, welcome your assistance and also to learn from you what um, you um, hope uh, to uh, achieve uh, from us and make it a two-way street. So my time is limited. You have a number of other wonderful speakers and I so much appreciate uh, you having me. Thank you, Michael. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. And we're all really excited that you're excited about your child being a part of the Macaulay Honors Community. So my name is Julia, and I'm a current third year student at Macaulay. I'm on the Baruch campus, and I'm majoring in financial mathematics with a double minor in communications and New York City interdisciplinary studies, which is the minor that Joe mentioned earlier. Um, so my journey at Macaulay began two years ago when I entered Baruch as an intended finance major. I was certainly looking forward to my classes, but after taking a look at my schedule, I had noticed that I had already taken the required math classes in high school, and I was going to miss taking courses in my favorite subject. So I met with my Macaulay advisor to look into possibilities of taking a math class just for old time's sake. So she enrolled me into the next level calculus course and I loved it. After speaking with some of the students in the class and scheduling a lot more meetings with my advisor, I discovered the financial mathematics program at Baruch. So I made the switch from finance to financial math in my second semester. And while the classes are definitely challenging me, I'm really enjoying my curriculum so far. I'm really grateful that I had my Macaulay advisor as a resource to turn to for help. So Macaulay has not only given me helped me by providing me academic guidance and support, but also by giving me opportunities for my own personal growth. Now to explain, for as long as I can remember, my number one fear has always been public speaking. I have always tried to avoid it as much as I can, but even the thought of speaking to a large group of people would make me turn beet red and give my stomach butterflies. <laughs> so when I came to Macaulay, I made a promise to myself that in four years, by the time I graduate, I would consider public speaking my strength not my weakness. So to start myself on my journey, I decided to join the Macaulay Student Ambassadors Program, which is actually what brings me here today talking to all of you. As an ambassador, I had the opportunity to put myself in these seemingly uncomfortable situations, speaking to groups of parents and students, make mistakes and grow as a public speaker. Had you told me two years ago that I would be speaking here today, I probably wouldn't have believed you. From this, my confidence has grown in every aspect of my life, and so has my family here at Macaulay. I actually met my best friend here and we're student ambassadors together. So if there's one piece of advice that you can take away from the session today, let it be to encourage your child to try it, whatever that may be, to join that club that they're interested in, to pursue things that might seem terrifying at first, but so gratifying in the end. This is where your child can gather those experiences, find their path, and become the person they want to walk across the stage in four years. So I'm halfway through my college experience and I still have so much that I want to do. Macaulay offers an opportunities fund that I hope to apply to, to be able to study abroad in the future. I've always loved to travel and I visited many countries with my family. To be able to mix that excitement with a college experience would be an absolute dream. Additionally, I want to go into the finance industry after I graduate and I have an internship next summer at Citigroup that I'm really looking forward to starting. But no matter where I find myself in the future, Macaulay has already given me everything I need to succeed. So your child is in good hands. Make it a great ride and enjoy the rest of the session today. Thank you so much. And now I'll pass the spotlight over to Sean. Hey, uh, my name is Sean Abraham. And that was, I don't know how I can top Julia, but uh, uh, I'm a graduate from the Macaulay Honors Program at the College of Staten Island graduated this past May, and I'm so excited to be here to talk about this program, and there's so many things to talk about. I just love it, love it, love it. I wish I can do my four years all over again, but uh, I graduated this past May with a Bachelor of Science in Information Systems, a Bachelor of Science in Economics, and a Bachelor of Science in Business, so I triple majored, minored in Business Data Analytics. So what made me accept my decision for Macaulay and how did I hear about it? Um, this was about five years ago, four years ago, and I was thinking about the program and I was told about this program through, you know, word of mouth. You know, I heard about it from people it, and uh, I decided to attend the uh, in-person event talking about it and, you know, the webinars they had. And I learned that, you know, this program 
is similar to my high school experience, which was the small classroom environment, being able to um, have one-to-one -one experiences with advisement. And when I got accepted, you know, one of the main things that I was uh, super happy about was the uh, free laptop they gave out, uh, gave out to all students, the uh, tuition waiver for four years, and the opportunity fund that allowed students to travel abroad. And when looking back in my four years, what I my important takeaway would be the advisement. You know, one of the things that uh, many new students at other schools uh, worry about is making a schedule, being able to graduate in four years. And through Macaulay, that is not something to worry about. You know, my advisor, especially during COVID and during a non-COVID year, um, we would have one-to-one -one convos whenever we needed help. Um, she would give us her number. We would be able to text her and ask her questions. I, I've i even emailed my advisor at 1130 at night and she emails two minutes later with answers to questions. And, you know, that advisement, that one-to-one -one advisement, it's something that a lot of other schools don't really have. And, and that's one thing that I am truly blessed about at uh, as a Macaulay student, as a previous Macaulay student. I mean, I'm currently um, pursuing my master's at uh, Columbia University, pursuing a master's in data science. And, uh, you know, I can tell you, I, I really do miss Macaulay. That one-to-one -one advisement is something that I truly, truly miss and something that should be treasured. Um, my Macaulay experience prepped me to go into this field. I, I want to go into, you know, what Dr. Ugritz has mentioned, which is seminar, you know, seminar one, two, three, and four, uh, where we look at different uh, current events, current issues that are plaguing New York City, that are currently affecting New Yorkers. And my project seminar three was looking at carbon emissions of cars and bikes and buses and, you know, looking at their impact on campus and on Staten Island as a whole. And, you know, we looked at a lot of data. We asked a bunch of students, you know, almost 400 students on campus about how they commuted back and forth. And we used that data to play with that data, was able to make that data point, uh, paint a picture of how students commuted. And, you know, it made, it created a spark in my head and led me to realize that, you know, this is what I want to do, you know, be able to analyze data, to paint a picture, to be able to tell us what's really going on in the world. And with that, I pursued my, or I'm pursuing my master's in data science. And I actually did another uh, research paper, which is something that you're required to do as a senior graduate from Macaulay. And I did it on um, the election data and comparing election results of 2016 and 2020 versus polling data, which is, you know, that was, that's a really hot topic, um, at, at least last year. And, um, that led me to pursue this field and it was all thanks to Macaulay. You know, if it wasn't for Macaulay, I probably wouldn't have double or even triple majored. I mean, I even have a friend who's doing five or six majors right now and is graduating within uh, four years. So with Macaulay, all things are possible. And I truly, and I, I keep mentioning this, but the one thing that everyone has to realize is that our Macaulay program has great advisement great assistance. You can reach out to your local advisor. In fact, my local advisor keeps sending me job offers and keeps sending me um, employment opportunities, even during my Macaulay time and uh, post Macaulay time, you know, they, they have direct connections and that connection is something that Macaulay has and something that all students should uh, take advantage of. You know, your advisor is your greatest asset. Uh, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention is the opportunities fund where you're able to travel abroad. And that's one thing that's really, really unique about our program, that the study abroad opportunity is something that Macaulay wants kids to do. It's not like a side activity. It's something that you are able to do if you would like. And on top of that, it's funded. Um, this past summer, uh, previous summer, last summer, um, so this is 2020, uh, I was actually supposed to go to London to uh, for for a summer program. It's the uh, London School of Economics. I was uh, going to study there, but you know, due to COVID, it got canceled. But that program was funded through Macaulay, and I you didn't have to worry about 
um, any of the bills, you know, that was all Macaulay funded. And that's one of the things that uh, that's truly spectacular about this program. You know, they, they want you to grow. They want you to sprout. They want you to, um, they want to see more out of it. They push you to see more and they want you to be the best thing that you can possibly be. And that's something that Macaulay is great about. Uh, one last thing I want to mention is don't be afraid to join clubs. Don't be afraid to join opportunities and um, events that Macaulay may have. You know, I was a, uh, I guess that's my beeper. I was a student gov rep and that's something that Macaulay helped me to do. So uh, I guess that's my time's up. Uh, I'm going to pass it on to the next person. Thanks, Sean. Uh, my name is Joan Rose Palacios and I am the parent of Olivia Palacios, who graduated in 2020. So um, I want to touch on uh, how I learned about, how we as a family learned about Macaulay and what sort of made the decision easy for my daughter. So back in the early 2000s, uh, the company that I worked for, uh, our chairman, our CEO, he had been a very proud City College grad. And he loved all things City College. And he introduced us to Macaulay students. We had a reception, brought a bunch of them over. We work, we are, our building is right next to Baruch. And we ended up hiring, I think, maybe six or seven of them for the summer. And I was absolutely blown away, away by how tremendously pre prepared these students were. And it was comparing them to the Ivy Leaguers and everyone else. They were fantastic. So I kind of put that away in my back pocket. And I said, well, my daughter, who is in elementary school, when it's time for her to go to college, definitely this should be on her list. And fast forward to high school, she did her own independent research uh, and applied because she wasn't secure about it, but she applied to and was accepted at uh, 14 schools. But Macaulay was it. Once she went to that uh, accepted students uh, event and started meeting people in the community, it was a done deal. And she also knew she wouldn't have any debt at the end of it. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna talk about is uh, some takeaways. You know, What was the experience like for the four years um, that she was there? And she was at Hunter. So there are three primary um, things that stood out to us. And one of them, Sean was so articulate about um, having an advisor. And for, for Olivia, her advisor, Charlotte, was like a lifeline for her. This is someone who from the first day uh, at orientation, first day when we went in, I think, I forget which meeting it was, but she met her. And to this day, a year after graduating, Charlotte is still there to provide advice, encouragement, on everything that you could think of. The second thing that was a big plus was having priority registration. Um, you're talking about you know, classes that a lot of people are competing for, but your Macaulay students are gonna get that priority registration. So um, that was huge. And then the third thing was the feeling of community. So there were events like the original, the, the orientation, the core Macaulay seminars, getting to go to the opera, um, and even the black and white ball. There were so many different things that solidified the sense of being a part of a small, close-knit group in a very large institution, which is, you know, City University. Now, as far as uh, Olivia's plans are for graduate school or for life after, um, she was fortunate enough in senior year to get uh, accepted into her um, passion, which was the uh, physical therapy program at Hunter. But there were some physical issues that weren't resolved at the time, and she had to make the decision that she needed to move into a field that was less physical. And that was, that was hard for her because for four years, she had been on that track. She was a psychology major, biology. And um, she did the research and this was uh, right as COVID hit and um, finally decided that when she explored all the therapy areas, speech language pathology would be it for her. So she's passionately going after it right now. She's doing prerequisite courses, volunteering, taking every opportunity to shadow, which in a COVID again environment is very, very challenging. But um, her advisor has been there to help her 
with the new graduate applications and just the encouragement. So um, she's excited. She's hoping to work in the pediatric field and has been uh, volunteering all over the place. So we're pretty excited. And um, one thing that I want to add is that, you know, we are blessed. We parents, we families here, we're blessed to get a really high level education because the Macaulay program is, is ranked. It's well ranked amongst honors programs. And we get that right here in our hometown, most of us. And uh, debt free with opportunities that you're not going to get in many other schools. And so in my place of employment, my payroll deductions are matched by my employer. So I've been doing that since kindergarten all the way through. And once we got to Macaulay, that's what I switched over to. Now, my daughter graduated a year ago, but guess what? I still feel that I can continue to contribute and get that match, get double for the money because I want other families to have the opportunities that we had. So if any of you out there are on the fence about why should I contribute? Don't think about it, just jump in. Thank you so much for your time today. Joan, thank you, thank you so much for that. Couldn't, couldn't have a, a better moment to follow than your, your very generous pitch for why it's important to support Macaulay. I'm Jeffrey Glick. I'm the Vice President of External Relations at Macaulay. My team at Macaulay is responsible for identifying and recruiting our incoming class of honor scholars. And I'm sure you'll be proud to know that your scholars were chosen from a very competitive pool this past year of over 7,300 applicants, our, our biggest applicant pool ever. External Relations is also responsible for the college's overall marketing and communications, and perhaps most essentially for raising the private funds from philanthropists, foundations, alumni, and parents that make possible the many academic and student life enhancements that Macaulay provides. From the Macaulay laptop that's been that's proved to be not just an essential tool for learning, but a vital lifeline during the pandemic. To the cross-campus student clubs that come together at the Macaulay building, even now during COVID, we actually have student meetings that are beginning to take place in the building. I, I did note there have been a number of questions in the chat about that, and we'll talk about that more in Q&A. Um, to the full cohort seminar activities like Night at the Museum, BioBlitz, STEAM Festival, or the Future of New York Conference, all of which are tied to those seminars, and to the Opportunities Fund grants that support experiential learning. From our very first class of honor students, now 20 years ago, Macaulay's been a vibrant model of a public-private partnership. The tuition costs, as you all know, are generously funded by the state of New York with additional participation from each of the eight campuses. But all of the costs for the many enhancements that make Macaulay a truly exceptional education come from the generosity of our foundation board. And Michael, thank you for your generosity, both, um, both in the, the material support and your, your very direct participatory support in Macaulay. Um, it comes from leading foundations like the Mellon Foundation and Goldsmith Foundation, from corporate partners like Goldman Sachs or Con Edison, and very importantly, our alumni and parent communities who recognize the exceptional value of a Macaulay education and recognize how important their contributions are to realizing our mission. You know, in, in the efforts that we make to help raise the funds that make all of this possible, we look to provide opportunities for people to participate at whatever the right level is for you. So, you know, whether you're a corporate CEO who's making a six-figure gift or whether you're a recent graduate who's, who's kicking in $20 to help support student clubs, there's a good opportunity for you to fit in and help support the efforts that are happening at Macaulay. Over the course of this coming year, our 20th anniversary, there will be lots of opportunities to come together, not just virtually like this, but we are hoping, uh, the situation allowing, that there will be more than a few in-person opportunities. And one of, the, one of the most exciting opportunities that we have will be our 20th anniversary gala um, coming up this May, which is one of the key ways that we raise funds for the Opportunities Fund. And it's a great way to get to meet the foundation board, many of the alumni and other parents who help make all of this possible. I hope over the coming year that I'll have many opportunities to meet and speak with you all and look forward to hearing any questions that you may have during the Q&A session, which I wanna make sure we have plenty of time for. 
So uh, I will turn this back over to my great colleague and good friend, Steph Straffi, to continue the program. Thanks again, for everyone, for joining us. Thanks, everyone, for sharing your perspectives on the college. And so sorry for the technical difficulties before, but I'm back. Um, before we begin uh, with the q and A, I I want to say a few words uh, about what other folks have been talking about, and that's Macaulay's Parents Council. The first words are, please join the council. You know, it's a way for you to get to know the college, to join the committee, and to meet other Macaulay parents. But most of all, membership in the Parents Council supports and enriches your child's education during their time at Macaulay. More than 130 of our families are members and we'd love to include you too. If you join now, uh, you'll be invited to our annual Parents Council Appreciation Reception, which will be held on the evening of Wednesday, November 17th. It will be both a virtual and in-person event. Those who are comfortable doing so can attend the reception right here where I am at the Macaulay Building on West 67th Street. We will provide you with my contact information and a link to the Parents Council page in the chat so that you can learn more about membership details. In addition to raising money to enhance our students' learning experiences, I also serve as parent liaison here at the college. Please know that I am a resource for you at Macaulay. If there's something that you need help with or if you have a question, please feel free to reach out to me at any time. And now I'd like to open the floor to questions. Please type your questions in the Q&A uh, in the Q&A box on your screen, and we'll be happy to answer them. Okay, I see that uh, we have a, a question for our Chief Academic Officer, Dr. Joseph Ugaritz, and here's the question. My student has some hybrid classes, like the Arts in New York City Honors Seminar, but most of his classes are online. How does Macaulay provide a great educational experience when students learn remotely and don't have the benefit of in-person connections? Well, that is an excellent question. And I see that it's something that's on a lot of parents' minds uh, right now, I see from looking at the Q&A. You know, we've, we've all had to make adjustments in the past year and a half. And, and we're really, uh, I, I think we've done a good job with uh, the resources available to us because Macaulay has, as Jeffrey said, a certain baseline of equipment and because we had already developed an expertise in utilizing digital and online tools uh, to provide the kinds of connections and communication that uh, the students do need, we did better than most colleges during the fully online time. As we make this new transition uh, from fully online to more hybrid to, as, as Dean Valdez said in, in the spring, majority in person, uh, we're starting to make kind of the, the, the new best practices in incorporating some of each modality. We find that some students are feeling uh, isolated or missing out on the in-person experience. We also find though that there are some advantages to work online. We've been able to arrange artist visits and museum visits to places where we couldn't actually go in person. Uh, so we hope to integrate some of what's best about these online experiences as we move back to more in-person experiences. Um, those will be happening. Uh, and I, I see the concern from, from parents in all of these questions. And I, I share that. I mean, all of us here at Macaulay feel the same, that we want to get back to the, the time of normality again. Uh, and we are getting there. So the, the spring is coming sooner than you think. And the second half of the fall may include many more of these kind of uh, in-person uh, events and experiences that, uh, that can be done in a hybrid type class so that they're not, they may be fully online at the moment as we've just sort of reached the, the vaccination, uh, uh, I guess, magic moment of, of all students being vaccinated. But the, the follow-up to that is to have more in-person activities throughout the rest of the semester. And then of course, even more in the spring. Okay, thanks, Dean Ugaritz. Guess what? There's another question for you. And that question is, does Macaulay offer any dual degree programs, for example, BS, MS programs? We do indeed. I mean, it, it's, it, it's a, I don't want to get trapped in the jargon, uh, but uh, what we offer is what our pipeline or four plus one uh, program, so that students are able to complete, if they're enrolled in these programs, 
to complete their bachelor's degree and get a start on the graduate courses while they're still undergraduates. Uh, there's several advantages to that. One is a shortened time to, to getting the master's degree. And the second, to, to be perfectly honest, is, is to help with the financing of the whole process. In most cases, those graduate courses that are taken while they're still undergraduates can be covered by the Macaulay tuition waiver so that students can get a jump start on their uh, master's degree and on paying for their master's degree so that with the four years of the bachelor's degree and then the one year uh, of, of, of master's work, they can finish with both. We currently have those <coughs> programs with the Master of Arts and Liberal Studies at the CUNY Graduate Center and with CUNY School of Public Health. Uh, leading to a, a master's in public health degree, which we're finding is very popular among students, um, even or especially those who intend medical school later on. Uh, the MPH degree is a great credential to have, even if you're going to then go on and be a physician. Uh, we're looking at a, a whole range of new programs uh, of this sort to be rolled out in the next year or so. So if your students are uh, freshmen or sophomores right now, uh, they should pay attention because they will be able to uh, to take these these four plus one or these BAMA or BSMS degrees. Great, thanks so much. Okay, I see that our next question is for Sean. And Sean, here's the question for you. As a parent, I'm concerned that my child finds the right career path and is able to get a job with opportunities for growth once she graduates. What did Macaulay do to prepare you for the 21st century workplace? That's a, that's a really great question. And uh, thank you for that. Um, Macaulay implemented a new program called Handshake. And um, as a student currently at Columbia, uh, we use Handshake. A lot of Ivy League schools use Handshake. And I'm really happy that Macaulay has implemented it because um, through Handshake, you don't really need to search for a job. It's like Facebook, but for jobs. So it handshake has your info. So what degree you're um, currently pursuing, what your interests are and what your fields are. And it matches you with jobs and it matches you based on like uh, what your current resume is. So you are linked up with jobs. Jobs are given to you. Um, my advisor, um, Lisa French and Anita Romano will, um, gave me a, so many opportunities for me to grow, for me to pursue what I want to do, gave me basically uh, opportunities for me to figure out what I want to do. And it was through those opportunities that I was able to uh, figure out what job I want to do, what career path I want to focus on. And um, it helped me to uh, link up and have connections to potential employers. So uh, Macaulay has handshake and that's the uh, main crux of how you can link up and get connected to employers and also your advisors have direct routes to employers. And uh, that's how you do it. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Sean. Okay. Let's see. Our next question is for Dr. Valdez. Uh, Dr. Valdez, and here's yours. Um, many parents have asked about restrictions on visiting in the dorms. So one thing I would like to say is that each, so with regards to our dorms, the dorms are controlled by the campuses, right? And so Hunter's dorm, Brooklyn's dorm, CSI's dorm, right? And unfortunately, we at Macaulay have no control over those dorms, right? And so that's really looking to what that campus, the, the, what the, the, those presidents have decided about those campuses. I will say, as I also am I'm monitoring the Q&A, that in, with regards to the concerns about, about isolation, about classes, um, I, I wanna provide you some insight as a faculty member who just taught in the spring 21 semester. We as faculty had to decide our modality for teaching early spring 21, i.e. March 21 when we had no idea, vaccines were not yet readily available and we were encouraged to be safe, right? And so I saw that someone said that the professor switched the modality right before classes were supposed to start. That is not, they were not supposed to do that, but they've done it. Um, but please know that the vast majority of classes across the CUNY system will be in person spring 2022, as my colleague, Dr. Ugarit said. 
And with regards to the dorms, that of course means that CUNY is taking every precaution to make sure that your children are safe. That is our highest priority, their safety and their academic well, their well-being as human beings, right? So that means academically, that means socially. Um, I have said that, you know, I, I encourage someone to look at, uh, follow the, the Instagram accounts of those particular campuses. I'm on Instagram. It's the way that I am connecting with students as well, because they know that, you know, many of them have not spoken with the Dean um, <laughs> in the past. And so you can follow me on Instagram. I'll put that in the chat as well, but please know that all of us um, are both keeping mindful of, of the safety of our students and also they are connecting just in different ways, right? Also the counseling centers of all the different campuses and our own counseling, we are deeply, deeply uh, invested in making sure that our students are, are well, mind, body, and spirit. So please know that, that we take a very holistic approach to our students and their well-being. Thank you, Dr. Valdez. Um, I see a next question is for Jeffrey, uh, and it's about the Macaulay application. And the question is, why are only two college selections allowed for Macaulay? Doesn't that limit student chances of being selected? How can an applicant know what campuses they have higher chances of being accepted to? Um, thanks for that question. The application process has actually changed and now you you can only select one Macaulay campus when you're choosing to apply. So for, for prospective students, it's very important to do research and figure out which is the campus you're, you're genuinely interested in. Um, we do have a checkbox on the current application that basically says if you're not accepted to the campus you applied at, you'd like to be considered at any other campus. Um, we, we eliminated the second choice because, frankly, a number of the campuses didn't consider students that marked their campus as second choice anyway. Um, and the application process is, is, is quite rigorous and it's handled on each campus separately. So it really isn't possible to have uh, an applicant read on multiple campuses and considered at the same time because each campus makes those decisions independently. As far as you know, knowing where you have the, the, the best chance to apply to, we, we do intend to be creating a, a recruitment report, uh, an enrollment report over the coming year where we'll make more public statistics on, you know, how many students apply and are accepted at each of the respective campuses. So that it does, it does vary quite a bit. Um, I'm assuming that the audience here though are really current parents and not prospective students, but if there are prospective students, I do encourage you to attend one of our open houses. Uh, that's probably a better form for some of these questions. Thanks. Okay, thanks, Jeffrey. Um, let's see. Our next question is for Joan. And Joan, the question for you is, how can parents become active in the Macaulay community? Thanks for the question. Um, uh, as, as Stephanie was talking about earlier, the Parents' Council is definitely the place to start. Uh, get plugged in. Uh, I'd say, I think, uh, Stephanie, did you put a link in the uh, in the chat? Yes, we are going to put a link in the chat. I think Michael is going to do that for us. Okay, perfect. So I would say get involved there. Be one of those parents and you will have the heads up on everything that's happening and have the opportunity to participate, get involved in uh, making some decisions. Uh, so uh, that's my biggest advice for you get involved with the community through that council. Great, thank you, Joan. Um, the next question is for Julia. Okay, Julia, here you go. How often should my student see his advisor and do advisors provide guidance on academic issues only? Yeah, so um, a lot of us have talked about our academic advisors here today, but um, Typically, at least on the Baruch College campus where I am, um, first years and second years should be meeting with their advisors every semester to go over their schedules. That's the re like required meeting that you sh that students should be going to, um, where your advisor will look through your schedule, see if you're on track with those Macaulay courses, like the seminars every semester. 
um, and just making sure that you're on the right track and setting you up for those first two years so that you're more prepared to take on schedules and all that stuff in the second two years. But you are free to make appointments with your advisor whenever you'd like. Um, and no, it does not have to be strictly academic. I know my advisor, her name is Eileen at Baruch. She, um, she takes appointments for scheduling, for um, academics, obviously school, for study abroad, um, information about the opportunities fund that was mentioned before, or even just to talk if you're, you know, if something's off, if you just want to blow off some steam, maybe you have something that you've been meaning to talk to somebody about and you don't have that kind of person in your life. Um, they're there for you for whatever you really need. So it's definitely a great resource. Um, and I have met, I've been meeting with my Macaulay advisor consistently pretty much every single semester. Great, thanks, Julia. Um, our next question is probably for Dean Ugaretz. And the question is, uh, can students switch campuses after the first year? Uh, yes, well, the, the simple answer is yes, they can, but I, I should uh, be careful to qualify that. Uh, switching campuses requires approval from both the campus the student is leaving and the campus the student is to which the student is going. There has to be space for that student in the Macaulay program at the receiving campus. And there has to be a reason. There has to be something that's not available at the per first campus that is available at the second campus, things like that. Uh, but that can be done. It, it's not, not permitted in the first year, but after the first year with the assistance of the advisor and particularly with the two campus directors, uh, that is possible. Great, thank you. Um, next question is, oh, this is for Joan again. Okay, Joan. The question is, I'm sure that your daughter had many wonderful experiences at Macaulay, but what were, in your opinion, her biggest challenges? Hmm. Oh. Wow, that's a, that, that is a tough one. I'm not used to thinking about that. Um, I, what I would say is that, you know, I think we all have different children and my daughter was not one who was looking to, um, first of all, leave home. She didn't want to go too far away from home. And secondly, she had come from a very small school. Her high school was one of the small specialized high schools and even you know earlier. So while she was in the Macaulay body, the small body, Hunter is a very large school. So just, um, it was a combination of being excited, exhilarated, but intimidated at the same time. So um, it was really, really important that Hunter, uh, that I'm sorry, Macaulay was, had such an ability to, to have that lounge, that place that you could go everywhere you went, it was a touch point. So she didn't feel totally overwhelmed because uh, the last time I looked at the numbers, I think it was something like 70,000 or something crazy at, uh, at Hunter. So for us, that really was one of the biggest challenges. Everything else, there seemed to be resources that could help you. Um, if she had challenges, they weren't overwhelming. So hope that helps. Okay, good to hear that, John. Good to hear that. Um, our next question um, is, is for Dean Ugaretz and is, how does Macaulay assist students who want to future their education beyond undergraduate years? Oh, thanks, Stephanie. That's one that I, I really love to get that question because so many of our students do that. Uh, it's, it's one of the things that I think uh, we really specialize in uh, the, because our students can graduate with their undergraduate degree debt free. The opportunities for graduate study become much wider and broader and they can go almost anywhere. Sean is at Columbia right now, as, as you heard, and I think he's just one of many who, who make that leap. I mentioned the four plus one programs that, that we uh, provide that allow students to work with some of the CUNY um, master's study programs. We also have a, uh, a set of uh, advisors on the campuses, but also central advising that specifically focuses on preparation for graduate work. We have a Goldsmith Scholars program. These students receive extra mentoring and extra support in choosing and passing on to the, uh, the graduate degree. So it's, it's something that we're really concerned about and we're really careful to pay attention to. Uh, 
as one just uh, sort of current example uh, in the sciences, there's the uh, Churchill Scholarship Program, which allows students to have a fully funded uh, uh, program in science at uh, Oxford University in, in England uh, and includes travel, a stipend for living, all expenses paid. Macaulay is the only uh, CUNY uh, school that can uh, refer students or nominate students for that uh, program. So we really are pushing, uh, I wouldn't say pushing, but opening doors uh, for students who want to do graduate work after their undergraduate degree. Great. Thanks so much, Dean Ugaretz. I see that we have time for, I think, just one more question. And this last question is for Julia. Okay. So Julia, um, the question is, I know it's important for my son to do well academically, but I also want him to make friends and to feel part of a community. What are your tips for managing the school life balance? Yeah, I think um, a lot of students and, you know, a lot of my friends that I've been talking to ever since the pandemic, this is something that they've been prioritizing because, you know, after being home for so long um, and just focusing on school and doing those Zoom calls, it is important to see people and get out there um, and make new friends. So um, how have I been doing that? Um, I've been prioritizing, well, I've been doing a lot of time blocking. If no one knows what that is, it's basically scheduling a certain amount of time to do something each day. Um, so instead of fo like focusing on finishing the entire homework assignment or the entire research paper in one day, I want to make sure that I'm working on it maybe an hour each day and then make sure that my weekends are pretty free. Um, this is something that, you know, even when I was in high school, I felt like my work life balance was a little bit unbalanced. Um, so I'm definitely taking the time this semester to um, prioritize reconnecting with those friends that I haven't seen in so long. Um, and it definitely is important, you know, for the mental health of our, of our community and, you know, for ourselves. So um, definitely making a schedule, I think that would help a lot. And not being afraid to, like I mentioned before, join a club that you're interested in, or maybe taking a class that would force you to make friends. Um, yeah, those are, those are my tips. And I'm right there with you. I'm trying to do the same thing, striking that right balance between, you know, getting good grades and, and also maintaining friendships and having fun in college because that's what it's about as well. That's so true, Julia. Thanks so much for your answer on that one. Well, everyone, um, that does it for our program. And I'd like to again thank our speakers uh, for being with us tonight and for sharing their thoughts on Macaulay. Uh, I'd also like to thank my colleagues on the external relations team and to you for taking the time to join us. Uh, one final note, you may recall receiving our new parent survey a few weeks ago. Um, thanks to those of you who've already had a chance to send it back. Um, for those who haven't yet though, please take a moment to check it out. It's quick, it's easy, it's only seven questions and it will help us to learn more about you. We will drop a link to the survey in the chat box and we hope to hear from you soon. Again, thank you so much for coming and we look forward to seeing you at future Macaulay events. Good night. Thanks all, good night.